Hi guys, this is Mr. Robeson here, and this is Calculus. We've got a lot to cover this year, so in this little presentation, I just want to go over some of the main themes of calculus, give you a little preview of things to come. So one thing we're going to look at this year is slopes of tangent lines. Another thing very related to slopes of tangent lines is rates of change. And after a couple of, probably a couple months on that, we'll switch course and we'll do areas under curves. And then we'll look at lengths of curves. All right. So in pre-calculus and algebra two and earlier, you could find a function value at a particular point. So you could just plug in C to the function and then see how high it was and voila, there's your function value. All right. Well, in calculus, we don't necessarily want to know what the function value is because sometimes the function value won't exist. So we want to know what's the value as it approaches that, that one point, that missing point from both sides. Right? And that introduces something called a limit. Right? In algebra, you used to find the slope between two points. Right? It was the change in y over the change in x, or the rise over the run. Right? In calculus, we can find the slope at a single point. Right? And that brings us something else called the instantaneous rate of change. It also gives us something called the tangent line using that slope. We did secant lines before. You might not have called them secant lines, but if it was through two points and you found the slope, that is technically a secant line. All right. And before, when you found the rate of change of something, you said, what was the distance something traveled? And then you divided it by the time it took, and that gave you the average rate of change. All right. Well, in calculus, we can find the rate of change exactly at a particular moment. All right. So the process here is we take this secant line and we just make it closer and closer and closer to the point that we want the tangent line at. And a tangent line is a line that touches the curve just at one little point in that area. Maybe the curve curls around somewhere else over here and it crosses it again. But we're just looking at in this neighborhood here, the line only touches it once, touches the curve once, and it has the slope the same as the curve has right there. So curves now have slope. All right, the second half of calculus, we're going to look at area. So you found area before, and probably geometry, maybe even long before geometry, the area of a rectangle was just length times width. That's how much space it took up. All right, well, when we move to calculus, we can now find the area under a curve. So it doesn't have to have flat sides, and we can still find that area. It uses something called integrals. All right, we can also use integrals to find the length of a curve. All right, so we could find a length before in algebra using the distance formula. The distance equals the square root of the difference of the x's squared plus the difference of the y squared, or it's just the Pythagorean theorem, really. Here, we can apply that now to curves. All right, and this is the, the general idea, is we just make rectangles. We take this curve and we make the space under it into rectangles. If you notice, there's a lot of space missing here, and then we get a little extra space here and a little extra space here and space missing here. And then if we try some more rectangles, it gets better. And what ends up happening is we do an infinite number of rectangles and we get like the perfect amount of area under the curve. All right. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to introduce a new process in order to do all of this calculus. And that new process is using limits. We need things to be infinitesimally small. We need those rectangles to be really, really, really skinny. We need to... Those tangent lines, we need that point to be, that second point to be really, really close to the first point. And that's where we introduce limits. All right, so in the next video, we're going to go over some, cal some calculator hints and how to use the calculator for graphing. And then after that, we'll get into limits. All right, so I'll see you again soon.